Transistors. They're famous as components of radios, amplifiers, and more. Suppose you're building a robot and you have a control signal coming out of your Arduino. But this isn't strong enough to control the type of motor that you're using. Suppose you're trying to control something directly from a sensor, like a piezo, but it doesn't give you much voltage. Suppose you're just trying to make an audio amplifier. You can amp that up with a transistor. Basically, it has a layer of semiconductor that allows power to pass through. It allows you to use a small amount of input power to control a larger flow of power, or vice versa. Little input, big output. That's why you know them as amplifiers. They'll often come in strips of paper like this. Just cut them off, and you're ready to go. It can be hard to read, but make sure you figure out which type of transistors you have. NPN transistors are what I mostly use. These don't allow power to pass through unless you're applying voltage. PNP transistors are the opposite. If you want something that's normally on, but turns off when you apply a signal, then use PNP. My case in point today is a DC motor. This is common in all kinds of hobby robots, RC cars, and so forth. But the Arduino has a little trouble giving it enough juice. For this example, I'm using an Arduino Mega because it's very popular for robotics. It's got all these inputs and outputs, so you can control all the sensors and actuators that you want. It's also got a really beefy processor. I'm not showing you my computer because all I've done is upload the Blink sketch, and you'll see how we use it to control this motor. If I plug it directly into pin 13 in ground, it can get there, but it needs a little assistance. But here I've grabbed an NPN transistor. This is a BJT, which stands for Bipolar Junction Transistor. You can Google it if you want to know why. It has three pins, the base, collector, and emitter. The base is usually in the middle, and that's your triggering pin, which comes from your microcontroller. The collector collects energy like a positive leg on an LED, while the emitter gets connected to ground. Most Arduinos have a 5 volt USB pin, as well as the digital in and out pins. So you can connect the motor's positive input directly to that. The collector and emitter could be on either side. If you want to use an external power source, just make sure you've got a common ground. That means that both grounds are hooked together, the battery and the microcontroller. So run a line from the ground pin of your Arduino into that same row as your emitter. Check out the full tutorial for more info and troubleshooting, and I'll see you next week on Hackster 101. Hack on!